Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I'll discuss the new discoveries recently made in understanding the origin of turtles and the evolution of the turtle shell. Turtles arose during the late Permian and early Triassic periods, but it was during the Mesozoic that they became more diverse and abundant. The group survived the end Cretaceous extinction and quickly became the most common fossil vertebrate found in terrestrial and lacustrian rock layers during the Cenozoic. Fossil turtles and tortoises are incredibly abundant in the Cenozoic, and often vertebrate paleontologists don't collect fossils unless there are complete shells with nice skulls or skeletons. Fragmentary fossil turtle shells are super common because they are well ossified, and turtles live in habitats such as ponds and lakes and rivers where they, uh, their rapid burial is common. So the potential of fossilization is higher than most vertebrates. Turtles have two shells which enclose their skeleton. The shells are composed of ossified bone covered in a protective keratin sheath, which protects the bony shell like, uh, like a fingernail. The top or dorsal shell is called the carapace, and the bottom or ventral shell is called the plastron. Living and fossil turtles have an anapsid skull in which there is no temporal fenestra. Historically, paleontologists had viewed turtles as a group of anapsid reptiles that survived the Permian extinction and diversified during the Triassic period, and the only living group of anapsid reptiles. However, in the late 1990s, several molecular phylogenies suggest that turtles were more closely related to crocodiles and birds than they were to lizards and snakes. If turtles originated from late Paleozoic anapsid reptiles, then they should be the first branch off the tree with living reptiles, rather than nested within all the other living reptiles like snakes and crocodiles. This made paleontologists start to look more carefully at the anapsid theory of turtle origins. Now, known for more than a hundred years and first described by Harry Seeley of dinosaur fame, was a small, unusual fossil from the late Permian of South Africa. It was often invoked as the ancestral stem turtle. Eunodosaurus was classified as either a early turtle or a pararreptile anapsid reptile. Eunodosaurus exhibits wide ribs that made the body rounded and appeared to form a primitive shell around the small reptile. These wide ribs were widely regarded as the precursor to the turtle shell, and that turtles form their shell by the expansion of the ribs, both dorsal ribs to form the carapace, as well as belly ribs, gastralia, to form the plastron. The skull lacked any temporal openings on the side of the head, and instead had a gap along the lower margin similar to other Permian pararreptiles. It was strongly agreed that Eunodosaurus was a pararreptile, a derived anapsid reptile. But the molecular phylogeny was arguing that turtles arose from a diapsid reptile. Was there something that earlier paleontologists had overlooked. A juvenile specimen of Eunodosaurus with a nicely preserved skull was described in 2015, which showed that in juvenile skulls of Eunodosaurus, there was an upper temporal fenestra, and a lower temporal fenestra was likely opened up with age on the ventral edge to appear like the parareptile condition. As the skull matured, the upper temporal fenestra was closed off and the lower temporal opening uh, opened up on the ventral edge. This ontogenetic change in the skull hid the two temporal fenestra in adult skulls and was evidence that Eunodosaurus 
was in fact a diapsid reptile pretending to be an anapsid. This made sense with the molecular phylogeny since turtles would be nested with other diapsid reptiles like uh, snakes and lizards and crocodiles and even birds. It also means that the anapsid reptiles died out at the end Permian extinction, which is kind of sad to think about. During the Triassic, fossil turtles are rather rare, but in 2008, there was a fantastic fossil discovery in China, the half-shell turtle Odontoshelis. Odontoshelis is a really cool transitional fossil since it has a well-developed plastron or belly shell, while the ribs that form the carapace are not as well developed. The small fossil was found in marine deposits indicating that it was aquatic. Odontoshelis had spike-like ribs, which resemble modern soft-shell turtles, but the ribs are not as well developed into a bony shell or plates, although the ribs could have supported a keratin shell. One of the interesting primitive features of Odontoshelis is that it had both a long neck and long tail with a more lizard-like proportions. This indicates that Odontoshelis did not tuck in the head into the shell like modern turtles do. Long tails in fossil turtles are fairly common, despite living turtles having shorter tails that can often fit inside the shell. Odontoshelis also helps answer the puzzle as to the location of the shoulder girdle in modern turtles, which is located inside the rib cage or the shell rather than outside of the shell. In Odontoshelis, the scapula is anterior to the ribs, indicating that during later development of the scapula, it was brought posteriorly under the shell. Study of the development of turtle embryos also demonstrates a evolutionary change of moving the shoulder girdle backward and then under the rib cage during early growth. The shoulder girdle of turtles is really unusual and it is composed of three projections or processes that fit inside the shell. The three processes are called the acromium, the scapula, and the coracoid, with the scapula buttressing against the shell and the junction of the three projections at the glenoid joint with the humerus. During the Jurassic, two large clades of turtles arose, the pleurodeers and the cryptodeers. The oldest cryptodeer is the early Jurassic turtle, Cayenta chelis, from the Cayenta Formation of Arizona. The plastron and carapace are connected, forming a complete shell, and it's a, a fairly modern-looking turtle, although recent phylogenies place it as a stem turtle, ancestral to both the pleurodeers and cryptodeers, indicating a more recent split between the two groups. Several late Triassic turtles are known from Germany, including Proganoshelis, which had teeth on the Volmer and pterygoid, but used its toothless beak like modern turtles. Proganoshelis resembled modern snapping turtles and has a rough, well-developed shell. Turtles would continue to be a successful group with forms becoming highly specialized for marine environments such as sea turtles, which evolved during the Cretaceous, as well as terrestrial turtles called tortoises. Tortoises originated in the early Cenozoic with the fossil Hadronius, which is a fairly common in the North America during the Middle Eocene, and Stylomyles from the late Eocene of Colorado and Wyoming. Okay, so you should be able to describe the recent theory regarding the origin of turtles and why they are diapsid reptiles disguised as anapsid reptiles and that they diversify during the Mesozoic and Cenozoic eras. In the next video, I will detail to you how to distinguish the two groups of modern turtles, the pleurodeers and the cryptodeers. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, 
check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjaminslashburger.org. Links are found in the description below.